Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, guys. Stacy with me. Shalawama. And in today's video, we're looking a little bit closer at the sighting of the new moon as reported on April the 20th. Mm -hmm. Because for many of us, that was quite surprising. I don't know if you're familiar with how this works with the sightings of the new moons. But we're looking here at timeanddate.com, which says that the 0% moon, the black moon, was on April the 19th at 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. So as far as our channel and those following our channel would have assumed that there would not be a sighting of the new moon until the 21st. Okay. Because as a rule of thumb, you have to add one day and eight hours to the 0% moon before you're able to actually see it mm -hmm. before it's bright enough. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have April the 19th, so we'll automatically add a day. So that will take us to April the 20th. Okay. And then you add eight hours to 11 p.m., which takes us to about eight in the morning. All right. That's when the moon itself will be bright enough for us to see it. It'll be about 1% illuminated. Mm -hmm. But then we have to wait until sunset in order to actually lay our eyes on it because at eight o'clock in the morning, we're not going to see right. a new moon. Mm -hmm. We have to wait to sunset. Mm -hmm. So as a rule of thumb, we were expecting the new moon on the evening of April the 21st. Okay. But as we're looking over here at renewedmoon.com, we see that there were people who reported seeing it on the 20th. Okay. Which was early. Yeah. And surprising to a lot of people I mean, a lot of people around the world, especially myself, is a little bit surprised that anybody could see a new moon on the 20th. Okay. So I saw you and Christian doing a lot of calculating yesterday and talking about, you know, the moon sightings and stuff. I definitely did not know what you were talking about, so I didn't inquire. But do you or are you saying that it was seen or it wasn't seen? Are you saying that this is something new? What you saw us looking at yesterday was Enoch chapter 73 mm -hmm. that tells us how the moon acts each month, what to expect from it. Right. And what it was telling us was that on the first day, we can expect the moon to have one seventh of its light. And so we were doing the calculations on that. It equates to about 1%. So you were calculating to see if it actually can be seen. Well, that's what we're going to take a look at in this video. We're going to use the larynx this time. Mm. Yeah, that's new. Mm -hmm. Well, we drew lots. We prayed about it, you know, to make sure we could use the larynx. Normally, you know, we try to avoid such things, but we're going to be able to use this program mm -hmm. in order to see what Enoch is talking about and make a determination for ourselves if it was actually possible for them to see the new moon on the 20th because you look at you look at it you have somebody in west central new mexico followed by santa clarita california right these were the only two people mm. who saw the new moon on the 20th and this is at renewmoon.com one of the sources we use mm -hmm. but look over here at truthofyahweh.org, which, which is used quite a bit, the, the other one that we use mm -hmm. to see who reported the new moon, what we find out is that the same people reported on truthofyahweh.org. You see Santa Clarita, California. Mm -hmm. One person cited at 8.05. Right. And we can remember that time, 8.05. Mm -hmm. And the next one was New Mexico, I believe. And there they are there, West Central New Mexico, cited by two people at 8.05. Right. And I just noticed that that one, too, says 8.05. Hmm. So. So would California and New Mexico have the same time? No. New Mexico is on mountain time and California is on Pacific. Okay. So. That's quite odd that both of them reported at 8.05, even though they're in different time zones, looking from different places. So do, do we usually, and I use we, usually take the, I guess, witness of 
to people and go with them as to um, the what citing and yeah. the verification? Mm-hmm. No, actually, the answer is no. We we according to the scripture, that's what we need is two reliable sources. Right. But in today's world, we always end up with way more. Mm -hmm. We have people reporting in from Africa. Even somebody reported in from the United Kingdom last few months. Mm -hmm. People reported um, from all over the world. And so we end up with uh, about 10 or 12 reports to our own channel, including our personal visualization. Mm -hmm. And then we come to uh, truthofyahweh.org and get about 27 other Mm-hmm. People, so we end up with about fifty or more verifications or, or sightings, including those on YouTube, where you can pop in and you know mm-hmm. look at people who reported, you know, seeing. So we end up with a lot of people reporting, and now this month we have two, mm-hmm. well, three. Mm-hmm. Well, you have the two people in New Mexico and the one person in California, who coincidentally saw it at the exact same time. So what you're about to do in this video is to line up what scripture says is supposed to happen opposed to what we are saying that these three people are saying. No, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to come over to Stellarium Mm -hmm. and we're going to go to Santa Clarita, California, and we're going to look at a simulation of what they actually saw in the sky. Okay. Yeah. To see if it was possible to see because right now we see here on the screen and we see both the sun and the moon in the screen. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's actually a little bit difficult because the sun is actually blocking the moon out. Okay, I see the sun. I thought that was the moon, but I see the sun. Yes. So what we're going to do is go back to April the 20th. All right. And we're going to go back to 805. Well, we're going to start before we'll start at about 730. All right. When the sun is still up Mm -hmm. and then we'll work our way around. So what we see here is we see the moon up here. Well, Well, you see the word, you (laughs) you see the word up there for the moon Mm -hmm. up there on the 20th. And notice that at this time it is 1% illuminated. Mm -hmm. But the question is, would you be able to see it? Now I can zoom in on it a little bit, but let me turn back on the atmosphere. This is important because right now you can almost see the moon. I mean, if it was, it's right there. Do you think it's enough to see? It's actually 1% illuminated. Do you see any of it? But not only do you not see any of it right there on the screen, and it is definitely there. But watch what happens when we turn back on the atmosphere. In other words, what it would normally look like. There's your sun and it would be so bright outside that that's what you would actually be looking at. Right. See how I can switch it Mm -hmm. now. But again, this is at 733. 733. So let's move over here where we can see. Now, this is us looking into the western sky from Santa Clarita, California. And so let's step through time here as the sun starts to drop below the trees. It starts to get darker and darker. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we're at eight o'clock. So let's go ahead to eight oh five. There we're at eight oh five. We're going to pause it there at eight oh five. So this is the time they say they saw. This new moon in Santa Clarita. So this would have been the sky that they would have been looking at. Look at how bright it is. And then you say, well, where is the moon? You have to turn off the atmosphere. And the moon is behind it. So the question is, do you really think they saw that? And see, the moon is still here. The moon, the sun is not even below the horizon at 805. In California, right. And it's in California. Santa Clarita. This is the the purpose of this simulation. It shows us that the sun is still above the horizon at 805, which means that its light is going to drown out everything in the sky. Mm -hmm. So let's get below the horizon. Now, maybe they didn't have the right time. Let's go below the horizon now. So we'll keep stepping until the sun actually sets. We see it about to set there. Let's turn off the horizon so we can see it. It's about to go over the horizon. It's about to set. Now the sun has completely set. Mm -hmm. 
It's 8.30. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, look at the moon. Look at how low it is in the sky. And look at its visual. How much of it is actually being seen? There's none of it really there. That's what I was, I was about to say. Is it me? Because I'm not seeing You're anything. Not, it's, it's not there. <laughs> but here's the here's the, the kicker now. We understand how what Enoch is talking about as far as the Maseroth and how the zodiacs actually work. So if we look in here and we look at the constellations, we'll turn off the landscape so we can see everything. And we see that the moon is in Aries on the 20th. That's still in the first month. But watch what happens when we go to the next day, the 21st. Now we see the moon all the way up in Taurus. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how the Maseroth works. Once the sun goes over the horizon mm -hmm. and the new moon is spotted, you look past the new moon to see which constellation it's in. Mm -hmm. And that's how you know what season you're in. We're in Taurus right now. Whereas yesterday, we were still in the month Aries. Mm -hmm. Still in the in Aries. Now, while we're looking at this, let me show you how it would have looked on the next day, the 21st, starting here at about 7.30 in Santa Clarita. We will step through, looking at where the sun goes down, knowing that the moon will follow right behind it. We see that it gets dark, and once it's dark, now we have a chance to see the moon. And when we zoom in on the moon itself, there you can actually see the sliver of the new moon that would have appeared on the 21st. So if you go according to those three people spotting, saying they spotted the new moon, everything would have to be sort of disaligned as to support what they're saying, according to Enoch. No, not necessarily. I mean, they it could have it they could have actually seen it. Mm -hmm. We're just using Stellarium trying to simulate what they saw. Right. And according to a Stellarium, it's not really possible. The mm -hmm. sun was blanking out the moon. The sun was hiding the moon. The the moon is right there. We're looking at it now, but the sun is still so bright at eight thirty. Right. That you can't see it. It was um, would be almost impossible. Well, let's let's take the sun on down here to see when it actually gets dark enough to actually see anything. Okay. So that's going to be right around here at about nine eleven. But look how low the the moon is in the sky now. Mm -hmm. It it has an altitude of only two degrees, which means it's only two degrees above the horizon. Which for us, we would have never saw it because that's below the trees. Right. But the question is, were they able to see it? I mean, if they're in a desert or anything like that, was the moon high enough in the sky for them to actually see it? And we already know that they didn't see it at 8.05. Right. But was it possible that they saw it at 9.11? Mm -hmm. Well, turning back on the atmosphere and the landscape, we see what they're looking at. They're looking for the moon through right there at the horizon two degrees and so that's how low in the sky the moon would have been mm -hmm. when it was dark enough to actually see it mm -hmm. so the question is do you believe it do you believe that these two people out here saw the new moon well i guess that's up for debate in the comments but for me i don't understand first of all i don't understand how they both saw it at 805 when there's two different time zones and from what I'm seeing on Stellarium, you know, my eyes aren't very good, but I don't see how they could have seen it. What do you think? The clincher to me is how the moon was still in the sign of the ram on the 20th. Mm -hmm. And it didn't actually reach the sign of the bull until the 21st. So that tells me that we didn't actually enter the second month. The second month on the sacred calendar until the 21st, which would mean that today, March the 22nd, is actually New Moon Day. So we'll continue to celebrate the rest of this 
New Moon Day. Now, the significance of this is the sacred calendar, of course, being the second month. There are many who will be participating in second Passover. Well, this is what it will actually look like for the second month. We have New Moon Day on the 22nd, and then we'll do our communion Passover celebration on the evening of May the 4th. And of course, the first day of unleavened bread will be May the 6th. I think another thing that um, this topic brings up is how important it is to have reliable verification. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not reliable. I'm just saying that everything is not lining up with what we're used to seeing. That's a good point. It, nothing's lining up to what we're used to seeing. Everything mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. Something's. I ain't gonna say something's different. Everything is different. But anyway, I'll save my opinion for the comment section. I'll see what everybody else has to say. I know you will. So <laughs> we'll close this video out and take a look and see what's going on down there. And with that, we're going to say happy new moons and shalawama. Shabbat shalawama.